All right, back again. Today, uh, as you can see, I got my hood on, um, but uh, we're gonna be trying to get the vintage air installed, at least get the firewall pieces together um, and mocked up and installed. I'm not gonna mess with any of like the dash or um, uh, front dash covers, the gauge cluster or the, uh, the kind of glove box area cover. Um, I'll do that on final or when I get a little bit closer to it. Today, I just want to get the panels in, the brackets in, um, get some plumbing rounding figured out as far as the water heater hoses and all that stuff. Find out whether I'm going <clears> to, <throat> um, I'm going to basically put a panel, like a finished uh, firewall panel on the firewall or use their uh, supplied cover um, for all the plumbing routing. So last car I did, I did a custom uh, bulkhead for all the AC and heater components. Um, but on this, I'm not, I'm thinking keeping it simple. But when I go to start doing fiberglass work and body in the car, that may change. So for right now, I just want to get a setup, see what my challenges are and uh, go from there. So I'll turn the camera around and get started. So uh, this is uh, for 69 to 73 Corvette with factory air and that way they send you the right panel for the closeout on the firewall anyways uh the part number on this is 564173-pcv so we're going to go through um what you do get is you get um you get the panel the closeout panel with uh access for the plumbing um so i believe it mounts like this and then you have kind of a, a seal that goes around and then you have the assembly that comes out. Uh, basically pre-routed plumbing that comes through that opening. Um, the alternative is, is that you put a bulkhead in that general area if you do finish fiberglass and close that out. And then you have that bulkhead and you have to do custom lines, which is not horribly difficult, but can be super tight routing, which it was in my Camaro. Um, which makes it very difficult on the final install, but once it's installed, it's done, right? So, <clears throat> all right, so here's the evaporator bracket, um, and then I think it's this other bracket is for mounting to the firewall. Most of all of this, from what I've read, is um, uses new brackets and then existing. Um, mounting locations on the firewall. And then they have a closeout panel uh, for the fresh air um, vent. And I mean, it's, this is, like I said, it's my second kit, super comprehensive kit with all the different, um, I mean, I can go through it, but it's got all the tubing, all the vent attachments to connect their tubing. And then it's either got zip ties or screws or it tells you to use like self tappers. Um, that's been my experience. So uh, there's a little bit of firewall modification, uh, a little relief cut here. They're asking you to, um, I think a lot of these holes are already present. So we'll get into this. Let's unbag this and see what we're getting into. Um, so these are vacuum tested and uh, and they go ahead and um, cap these, right? So I always, I, I leave them on there until I'm ready to, um, as long as possible, just to eliminate any debris or anything getting in there. Everything's real nicely done. Um, all right, I'm gonna kind of read some of these directions, see what the first step is, so. All right, so one of the first things it's asking me to do in reference to getting this evaporator box mounted is to get these templates cut out. They have a couple of pages with templates, you cut them out, follow the instructions, fold it up. Uh, this one's telling me that I have a couple of holes that need to be drilled. And it's essentially at the edge of this bracket. Now, <clears throat> Clearly, it's the bracket stops here. Now, I always get a little worried because I actually replaced this. No, you know what? I replaced that one. 
I think I'm still good here. So I got to remove this small little dash bracket, put this in place, drill a couple holes in line. I've got a couple of these that need to be put in place, drill those holes out. And then there's a small little section here. It wants me to put the firewall cover on and then with a grease pencil or whatever, just mark the, uh, the opening that's in the panel. So I'm gonna do that real quick, show you what that looks like. So hole one, hole two. Now let's get this one mounted. All right, well, most, I guess, I don't know if it's most, but they tell you there's an existing a hole. Oh, the picture's not great. And I'm all over the place. All right. So, essentially, I, mean, I know this might be a little in depth, but whatever it's worth. Um, I just had to drill that one on the right, which is done. Didn't line up perfect. That's why I went off the hole. So, so just assembling the evaporator now and all the brackets. Um, basically, I'm going here. These two uh, quarter 20 bolts are actually in the evaporator here and here so we're gonna go ahead and get this mounted pretty straightforward seems like they're just hand tight <clears throat> and they have like <clears throat> excuse me threaded inserts so probably a good idea to just take it easy on uh, how tight you actually make these bolts but Everything fits pretty good. It's a little spring loaded there, like it's supposed to be. So this was a little interesting. I'm trying to figure out, it, it, it appears that it's trying to get me to install this, um, this four vent uh, plenum, right? So it's telling me to put these uh, 1032 screws or bolts in. And then if you look, like it's already assembled. So um, appreciate it, but not sure why it's in the instructions. I guess some don't come uh, assembled. All right, so it's kind of frustrating to be honest with you. <clears throat> I see the install of this large bracket right here pretty straightforward and as i'm looking around i'm like and i got extra parts i got this other bracket and i'm there's no other instructions and this is the only real uh page that shows the evaporator assembly and installation so anyways i'm looking on here and i see this <clears throat> um directions to install and i'm like this bracket i mean clearly this is the bracket but it's not on there, you have to put it on there. So, and there's two different sides that it can go on. <clears throat> Anyways, it looks like there might've been two brackets. So I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to mock this up and see, but the directions weren't entirely clear as to where this goes. So anyways, let's uh, get it in the car and see what uh, how it lines up. All right. Doesn't look like it lines up at all. Huh. Okay, well. <laughs> it's not even, I don't even have a hole on the uh, firewall for that bracket to line up on. Unless it's um, supposed to line up with the uh, um, with a hole on the actual cover panel. So clearly this is the bracket it wanted me to um, put the template on, not this bracket. So no big deal. We'll get that marked out and just double check on the firewall panel and give it another shot. All right, so that actuator um, the last one on the left comes in contact with this small offset right here. 
if I try to line up with the factory bolt hole, <clears throat> which the bracket, uh, which the instructions insinuate and, this, and tell me to use. Um, remember, these were the two holes that I drilled. And I'm not a huge fan, but apparently the only thing that holds this um, firewall cover on right here are like these push button fasteners that push through there. They're just like clips. I don't know. There's something that you would use on like interior panels. Anyways, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and then this little guy will inevitably, this little area here will be re, uh, clearanced for the, uh, or supposedly based on the <clears throat> instructions, you get clearance for all your, your plumbing. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, we got to, I don't want to dwell on the negative here. Just got to make it fit, make sure we don't compromise you know, fitment anywhere. Hopefully we can get away with this. So I'll probably just re-drill these, sorry, these holes for these brackets correctly. And then I'll make do with either drilling a new hole or uh, yeah, I'll make it work. Okay, so <clears throat> I think the long and short is that, and I don't know if this is, you know, the same for all cars, all C3 Corvettes, but I'm sure there's variables. I'm sure my car is a little bit different than yours or anybody else's that might try doing this. Here's the thing is that I'm not afraid anymore really to just kind of make it fit. So long as I've checked over everything, I've tried to look far enough ahead that I'm, I'm not gonna affect maybe other components in the car. So in this particular case, I originally, this is not in the instructions, but I drilled and tapped this because the panel was that far offset. And um, this was a new hole. And this was a new hole based on the, um, the templates, right? We're using the original, actually that was a new hole. That was a new hole. I think this is, these two are, are existing, something like that. Anyways, point is, is that because of that guy right there, I could not move it. I don't know if you can see it but I can't move it any closer. I can't move it any further this way. So I, what I did is I went ahead and I got all the lines installed, you know, snug. And uh, that way I can put the panel on, center the panel, put my, um, uh, this panel actually, how do I do this right here? I think this panel right here fits like this. So I'll get the top panel on, put this on. That's where it's gonna lift. Okay, and then I'll go through here, and I'm going to use um, these uh, 5 16 clips and nice button head uh, stainless hardware, and that's where it's going to live. So, anyways, let me get this together, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so <clears throat> I found common ground here for this panel. I used an existing, this is actually the original uh, hole that was in the firewall. My slot lines up pretty good <clears throat> to the original hole, by the way. I went ahead and re-drilled that and re-drilled that, which is just a little off. But as you can see, I went ahead, when I had it all in place where I wanted it, I went ahead and fit the cover plate, drilled those two uh, self-tappers out. Well, they're not self-tappers, but uh, little machine screws and got this fit. So now it's all gonna go right back where it is supposed to go and the firewall panel will be uh, will be done. So let me uh, wrap it up. Okay, so that's it. <clears throat> Easy enough. You can adjust these a little bit. They will bend, you can manipulate them. Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, if I wanted to get fancy, I'd pull this off. I would fiberglass do the patch and then put like a four gang uh, billet um, bulkhead, which is, you know, they're relatively inexpensive, but then you have to remake your your uh, evaporator lines. So, um, which I, I've done, it's it's just a chore, a little bit, another chore, right? Put it on the list. So um, anyways, that's it. I'm gonna go get the condenser and we're gonna see about getting that thing mounted. Okay, so the, um, Condenser kit has its own instructions. I'm hoping that the fresh air panel is in here somewhere. 
Lots of bubble wrap. Pre-bent. But I'm clearly gonna fall on the floor. Your dryer with O-rings. And a uh, little, little closeout panel probably goes right there. Um, clamp for the closeout panel. And then more bubble wrap. This is the condenser. Dang. Yeah, there's your AC lines. Wow, they're already brand. I don't have to mess with any of that. That's super nice. <clears throat> I didn't really realize that. Here are your brackets. So uh, let me dig into this and we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> All right, so fortunately my car is an uh, air car. It had air originally, so I don't have to do any uh, cutting, supposedly. Um, and everything should fit right up. The only questionable item is, is that I don't know really much about this core support. My original core support was toast. This is an original small block car. Um, my understanding is that a small block and a big block car with core support are different. And there's a few different kinds of core supports out there. Um, or at least I haven't been able to verify <laughs> which one I needed. I found this one super cheap early on. It's I think it's probably like a Dynacorn or something like that. It says made in Taiwan, like it seems everything is nowadays. So <clears throat> anyways, we're going to mock up these brackets, like the directions say, on the uh, condenser. Uh, do a quick mock-up layout and just see where, where we lay. So here's the game we all play whenever we buy radiators or condensers, and that is how do we not bend the fins? You think you are so careful the entire time, and when you're when you're done, you look and you're just like in awe at how many fins you actually bent. So technically, I should cut some cardboard, put it over this thing. Um, I think I got some tape, so I might do that. Well, so far so good. Mind you, I have no idea what an OEM. <clears throat> well, I should. The old one is out by the trash can. I'm just too lazy to look at it right now. But um, these holes are just passed through. I don't like this whole nut and bolt deal. I gotta find out how well, like my radiator doesn't fit at all. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna have to do some, just fabricate some of the hold downs and move them to, to fit. But anyways, um, all in all fit just fine. Almost like it was supposed to. I do not have any holes I gotta drill the holes in the bottom. Now, if I were to switch bracket, oh my gosh. If I were to switch these two brackets, then these holes down here would line up, right? Because that's in the middle, that's on the end. That one's in the middle and that's on the end. So anyways, I know you can't see that, but, um, but this is gotta have the gap for the, uh, dryer and uh, lines. So that's the way that's supposed to be. And then I asked myself, did I put the core support in backwards? And I think the answer is no. I think it's incorrect. So I've got to do a little bit of homework just to verify some of the stuff I've already got done. And then we'll go ahead and drill those holes out, make sure that that's what I'm supposed to do, and uh, set up the dryer. All right. Well, this went in a lot better than the condenser did. <clears throat> All the pre-bent lines line up really well. Um, come out looking pretty decent. Excuse me. And then um, I did not put... So the directions tell you to take the... The bolt that's used for the core support right there behind the dryer. It says take the nut and the washer off and slide the dryer bracket over that and use that as the mount. And it is a welded on nut, so I'll probably have to just pass through like a 5 16 um, quarter inch bolt uh, for that clamp for the dryer. So I'll do that on the finish probably. Um, I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself because I still have to fit um, the oil cooler and the um, power steering cooler. 
right here. So now that I have this on, I can kind of work on the radiator, work on the coolers. The one thing I gotta keep in mind on these cars is like that's the only pass through that you have from the engine compartment to in front of the radiator right here. So a couple of 10 AN lines, a couple of 6 AN lines, that's gonna get full really quick and it's probably not gonna look real good if I'm not careful, so. So anyways, that's the challenge. Uh, but for the most part, pretty happy with that. All right, well, just uh, picking away at this thing. Um, my son's home sick with some kind of virus, so I'm playing um, Dr. Dad or whatever. I'm just in the garage wasting my time here uh, getting some stuff done. Uh, I'll just finish with this also. I was really stoked about this. Let me turn the camera around. So because the car sits so low now, the bump stops that the original bump stops that are like two, three inches tall aren't gonna fly. So I went online and looked for some universal um, energy. Uh, let me see, can you see that? Anyways, energy bump stops. That's two inches by one inch. And boy, it fits like a glove. I think it's supposed to go in this hole, but I said screw it because it didn't fit because the bolt hole or the bolt was bigger. I just put it on the backside so it'll still catch. And then even more impressive, I was impressed by myself, if I'm being honest. Oh, hold on. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so this is half the size of the original bump stop. So the original bump stop was quite a bit bigger. The only problem was is that I had to drill and tap the top of this A-arm, which is perfectly fine. It's got a metal um, bushing in there, so you can't crush it, and this will spins free. Anyways, pretty stoked. One less thing to worry about. Yes, even my bump stops are, are custom, custom bump stops. That's what I'm talking about. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. That's it for today. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. You know the drill. You know, if, if you're uh, interested in seeing how this thing all comes together, subscribe. Keep plugging away. Content may show up every week and a half, two weeks now. Uh, the projects are taking a little bit longer to get done. If there's something that pops up, then uh, then I'll definitely uh, upload it and keep everybody posted on progress. But uh, big surprise at the end of this month, end of March. Got some stuff, uh, <clears throat> some big ticket items showing up. So I'm excited about that. And then... Um, yeah, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.